Hey, good morning guys. So, it's been really, really crazy. I haven't really done much video content. We've been keeping up with the vlogs, but doing a load of other how-tos and things like that. Just been really, really snowed under. I've been super busy. I've had a lot of stuff going on. You know, it's like business always comes before YouTube and it's really important that you guys know that but what i wanted to do is i hadn't shown you around this place for some time so i wanted to let you have a look and how we're actually doing so we've had a massive tidy up on the site we've got an our decamp fencing uh, banner work because obviously it's ripped and we want to put the new ones. These are really sun weathered and rain weathered now. We've got to move the diggers then to the next site that we've got to go to. Pretty much finish this. Hopefully will be our last skip. It looks a bit full at the moment. <laughs> We've got the scaffold down you can see where we've gone through put up a relevant snow guards at the top up into here and then we're just waiting for these new copings to be made all the way along here at the moment you can see the way we are blending in all of the cobalt work on here and all the fascia detail and then obviously you the existing header plinth and then the sill plinth here and then we've got some efflorescence coming out of the brickwork which is uh, inevitable because of the way the brick is itself i then come into here uh, you can see i got our joinery machinery we've just got a little bit left to do uh, as you know a lot of the sites will always have a bit of joinery machinery because it makes our life a lot easier we've now decamped the rest of the other shelves which are originally in the other room if you seem to remember where the canteen was so we've got some of these finials left so anybody wants any finials we've got a load of them left because we didn't double up on them because they were quite large and then basically this is the last room so if you can imagine this is all that's left over from the job now all we're going to do is move all of this stuff then down to the next job, which would you believe is only 10 doors away. So we're gonna be moving down there and doing an extension there. We've been able to um, squeeze one in there and do one for that client. So we're just setting that up at the moment. We've actually got some existing molds and machine molds that we've had done as well here. Now the exciting bit, which you won't have seen, is the kitchen, how it's progressed. Now the company, which is Tom Howley, have done this. Incredible service, uh, absolute brilliant finish as well. Really, really impressed with the guys. But let me just break this room down for you guys, okay? So originally, we'd had all of the kitchen and canteen, all the tools were stored here, weren't they? And sometimes the limo driver was 10 minutes late, you know? <laughs> <laughs> We've now laid this beautiful oak floor. we've made a lovely nose in there as well and then obviously we've recessed it into the skirting line continued this lovely detail all the way around and along and around to here we've also the client wanted to put us the slate hearth in there so we've done that and obviously we've got a beautiful fire there you can see you've got glass on both sides you can actually see all the way through it's really really cool and then what we've also done is replicated the mold this picture rail mold all the way around here and then we've returned it 
we've got to return this mold then all the way around and finish it into that corner. And then the other thing we have done, actually, match the coving all the way around, put it all the way around here. Alan's done a brilliant job all the way around here. And then obviously we're doing this panelling detail for the lantern on the other side. I can actually say we didn't do it, the panelling. The client did it. He's actually really, really handy, Thomas. Uh, obviously, you know he owns Rubber for Roofs and definitely check them out down below if you haven't used them before because they supplied us the lantern and they do loads of GRP. They do uh, resi tricks, which we always use because it's just a great, great product. But you can see here, look at this. Tom's done this. What a cool job he's done, isn't he? He's mitered it in. You've got to give it to him. He's done a great, great job, hasn't he? And there's going to be a lovely LED going all the way around here as well. How cool is this kitchen, guys? This is a beautiful oak top. I'm dying to show you that when all the surfaces go in here. But what I can see at the moment, what Tom Howley have done, is just absolutely brilliant. You can see it, look at that. There you go. There's the actual drawing and all the measurements. And I've got to say a massive, massive thank you to the guys who came to fit this because they were just absolutely brilliant. And they did an absolute brilliant job. The quality is just, it's there. It's just really, really, really nice, you know. Oh, look at that soft close there. Beautiful, isn't it, guys? And then obviously we've got the ovens here. The one thing I like about this Neff oven, which we fit quite a few of these, look at that. Door just disappears. I've got to say, Tom Howley's smashed it out of the court. The only thing we've got to do now is give a fine sand and obviously stain, well, with a stain for the client wants to, but then Osmo oil it as well as we normally would do. Now, one of the things I've got to do is I've got to finish off this moulding here, going all the way around. You can see this panelling all the way around the staircase. I've got to finish it here. I've then got to take it around here and take it around here. I've started to do the moulds, which are going around in here. You can see we put the panel in and the mould around here to come round and return into this doorway to make this detailing really nice. Pulled the trim along here, pulled the panel in onto this return, put it into here. And then obviously this is the first floor toilet. The client's gone for a lovely dark green here and then same again. Uh, the client Tom has done an amazing bit of panelling through here. This has been lovely nice sanded down now and that's the window, new window that's gone in there as well. So we've just got to put the toilet in here and the sink in here. Making our way through here, Frank the decorator making an amazing job. I mean look at this room now and obviously walking through into here. This one an amazing room and then here we go. Just got to clean up. Obviously there's a lot of dust and a lot of residue that gets left in all of the en suites and everything we're in so obviously there's a lot of work to do on our side to clean everything still and get it absolutely spotless. And then we're going to wipe all the tiles down a little bit more. So, you know, it's like everything, just got to keep getting on top of that dust, getting it on top, getting it sorted out. We'll have the builders clean and then clean all the windows as well for the client. And this is the room that you guys have been working on. So this is the locker version, which Dan and Elliot were very kind enough to give me a hand and throwing all the trusses on. Uh, where they're made, interesting fact. Go on. In a prison in America. Are they? In the East Wing. Ah, there you go then. You there you learn to <laughs> <laughs> You nearly got me. Um, not loads to do here, but there's still bits and bobs of work to do. Got a glass balcony gonna go out on here. My apologies for not doing further vlogs and how-tos. It's just been on really, really busy. And sometimes I want to bring that content to you, but I can't always bring it to you because I'm just really busy. And as you know, John's left, which is really unfortunate because he's a really cool guy, an amazing tradesperson. But you know, it's really important that I run my company, making sure it's making money, but then also keeping my clients happy. You're really as good as the last client, you know? So, but anyway, guys, look after yourself. See you soon. As you can see now, the job is uh, you know it's close to the end. One of the jobs left to do is fit the 
Doors furniture, so I'm just gonna show you guys what I do first. So I set myself up, so I put everything I need, all the tools. Obviously you can put a little bench or, or you can put them on the floor. So if you put, set yourself like that, everything you need, so it's much easier to fit the handle. So first thing I do, I get a wedge like that. And I wedge the door, so it's no movement on the door. There we go. And measure the height of the handle. So basically what we do, we, we set the handles all the same height. Less than 10 minutes. Well, these stones have had a good soak all day, which is good. Get my mat out. There we go. That's it. I've got a thousand grit. So I've got four thousand grit. And then I've got then eight thousand grit. Uh, the one thing I do is I'll start with my 1,000, jump to my 4,000, 8,000 to finish. One thing, 8,000 is really soft, so you've got to be careful. You can't push against it. You always pull, okay? But the one thing I will do is I'll leave them in the water until the very last moment. You can actually see now there's a slight hollow here. All this is nicely backed off now. So that was with a thousand. I'm then gonna to start to polish it with a 4,000. So obviously you can finish it with a 4,000 then go on to a 6,000, but I've actually got a 4,000 to an 8,000. So I'm 
going to work. Now, the key thing is when you do this, don't go gouging in on this. Make sure you put it on the edge, put it down, put your weight over here, and then just rub it in, get going. When you feel it start to stick, because obviously that's metal there in your stone. Uh, I always soak mine overnight, my water stones, in readiness to sharpen my stuff when I'm doing a load of joinery. Now, in a joinery shop, you'd be sharpening your chisels uh, two or three times a day. Just something that you did, but obviously on site it's a little bit different. And that's why I always put my bevel. Uh, when chisels come to you and blades, they come to you about 25 degrees on everything. But me, I take that out straight away and put it to a 30 degree main bevel. So, polish this up because I haven't used it for a bit. And then, I'll get the edge back on it again. I use the homing guides as well, just a little bit easier. It should start to polish up now, look, you see? Start to polish up now, look, you see? That was the grit from the thousand, and because this is a lot finer grit, it's starting to polish up this edge here now, isn't it? See what we got now. Here we go. There you go. It's starting to shine all this edge up now. I don't get overstressed about having the whole of the back of it polished because at the end of the day, I know this is flat and you can see now I'm just getting it polished on this edge. So I'll just polish it a little bit more and I'll work to that edge there and that's it. I won't try and polish the whole of the lot because if you can imagine some of the chisels can actually be slightly hollow ground so it allows you to get that edge really quickly so this but I won't just finish with the 4000 I'll actually finish with the 8000 Polishing this, you can actually start to see your face in it. That's how polished it is. See now there, pretty happy with that edge there. Get one last quick blow. That's why I like water stones. I just think they give you a better edge. Right, so quite happy with that. I'm now going to jump to my 4,000 to my 8,000. There we go. Now this will really polish it up. Get them bits off. Nice and flat. like a mirror there you, go, look, you can see now look it's like a mirror isn't it so I'm really happy with that edge the thing is now it's quite sharp now I haven't even sharpened it yet so now what I will do is I'll keep the 8000 and then what they call is the secondary edge now, the one thing I would definitely recommend in the joinery shop, I'd always do, end up doing it by freehand. But as time got on, I got to understand that actually honing and finishing your blade off on the same level all the time was quicker and efficient. This is a, a Fates, there's Leon Nielsen, there's loads of different versions out there. So I'm going to set this now to two inch, like that. Lock that off. That's the uh, angle that I want on the yellow at 30 degree. Now what I will do is 
because I want 35 degree because obviously I'll ground all of this to uh, 30 degree. I'm actually going to move that now back, blade stop to 35, like that. When I've now poked my blade through here, and now if you notice I always come from that way, I don't poke it in because I don't want to damage the end of the blade, so it's nice and square. Push it up to the stop, lock that off. Get it evenly clamped, slide that off. Now that is set now to do my blade at 35 degree. Now one thing I will do, because obviously being in 8,000 gauge stone, the first thing I'll do is I'll pull it back a couple of times like this. And the reason I do that is because if you don't get it, the edge started, it ends up digging into your stone. Categorically, in the 8,000 water stone, it'll dig in. Once you've got it going, you can then start to move it up and down, okay? Make sure your wheel stays on your stone. Keep it nice and firm, just nice and gentle. That's it, because I've done it a few times. I've actually got an edge on it, you see? All the way along, beautifully. Absolutely beautiful. So I'm going to just do a little bit more. And that's the great thing about the honing. There we go, and what will happen, there will be a little bit of a burr on there. So all I'm going to do now is undo my clamp. There we go, like this. And the last thing I will do is I'll just put it like there, like that. And I'll just give it a last rub off, like that. Just get that little bit of metal burr on there if there's any there. Look at that, it's absolutely amazing. Look at that, look. there you go, look at that. So, but uh, I'll set that back up now, so it's not nice and sharp. But this is just a little bit of a quick insight. I will set my blade, you see here, just a couple of mil through. Set it in this stock, like that. There we go, put it into the pinhole, set. Centralize it up. Centralise my blade, there we go, set. Now the one thing you've got to learn is when you do set a blade, when you tighten that up, whatever you do, if I'm putting the blade, pushing it forward because I want more meat on taking the cut, you always have to push forward. So at the moment, you can see here guys, the blade's way out too far. Can you see that if I put that on the edge? So for me at the moment, I've got to pull that blade back into the throat. So I'll instantly pull the blade back. Okay guys, that's what I'm doing. I'll eye it through again. Now the one thing a lot of people can make the mistake of is that when they're pulling it back, they just leave the blade at that point. You can't do that, okay? Once you, once you pulled it in, you've then got to take the looseness out of this, you see it? This looseness, and as soon as it then goes tight again, which you will do, you know then you've got a really good firm blade. So all I'm doing now is I'm just tweaking it. There we go. That's it, and I'm set now, look, that's a bit of cut. I'll try that, and if that works, then obviously if it's not enough, I'll then increase it a little bit more. And one thing, I never put my blade down flat. Always put my plane on the side like that. Set this now to 35, like that. I'll do this in fact, slide it out, make it easier. Hook that through here like that. Uh, but I know my stop's gonna be there. I've set it now at 35 degree. So all I'll do now, my roller's gonna run through like that. A little bit more careful with this, because you can't come the other way. Push it up like that, so it's actually on the stop. Lock my blade off, there we go. Undo that, so I can just move it. There we go. Undo that, move it out. That way, that's it, now that's set. So now I've already backed all this all off, so all I'm gonna do now is go to my 8,000. Stone, there we go. The one thing I do do is I keep my playing iron on one side and then um, I do my chisels on the other side. So, right, as is before, I'm going to pull it back. Pull it back. That's 
set. That's enough for me. So I'll undo that. Pull it back through gently. Put more water. Always like that, always on the edge first, push it down. Make sure there's nothing underneath here as well. Get the last rub off. Job done. That's absolutely razor sharp, that is now. Lovely. All right, ready to go. So today, the job today is I've got to put some sealant down a brick joint now. The one that we're doing here today is actually brick to brick on the corner reveal. Sometimes you'll get block to block or brick to brick and it's called an expansion joint. Now this expansion joint is 10 mil so I'm going to be using a OB1 product which is a multi-surface sealant as well as a, uh, an adhesive and this colour that we're going to be using to match into the bricks is called terracotta. We're then going to be using a silicon jointing kit. This is, there's different other makes, so this is a chroma, really good make, I bought it from the tile shop. We're going to be using this gauge circumference here. From that then, you need a skeleton gun, obviously to pump the mastic out with. This is getting quite old. You need a brush to brush all the debris off as well. The chisel then to set the gauge of the uh, size of the mastic that you want coming out, as well as obviously cutting the top of the tube. And then I use this. You can use a bolster as well, just to push the actual foam out your way to make sure you're getting uh, enough mastic in there to really key in properly. And the other thing is, uh, normally I'd use cold water, but today I'm using warm water because I want the mastic once to spray it off, so it warms the mastic, makes it more pliable for when I'm doing this silicon jointing. So I've got nice warm water in here at the moment. Okay guys, so let's go and have a look and see what I'm gonna do. So the first thing I do, the foam on this depth at the moment is absolutely perfect. The one thing I will do, if it protrudes past the brickwork, like it just is here, what I'll actually do, push that in, now I always prefer to push it in than rather cut it off because at least I know I'm just getting a good key to it. You can see I've got cobwebs here, I've got dust and dirt and debris and that's why I never apply any of my mastic unless I've got this really well cleaned off. So I'm going to clean it all the way down uh, so you get that debris off. Now I've brushed that on, I'm really happy there's no dust in there. Make sure it's nice and clean and tidy. I know I can now get my sealant into there to obviously then seal all this up and then I can actually then finish it all off. So the first thing I'm gonna do, now brush it off. Uh, looking at it, the one thing I will do is I'll just run on one size. So I'm looking at my gap now, I'm now gonna decide what size I'm gonna actually cut these um, nozzles at. Now the reason you can either use a chisel or you can use a Stanley knife. I prefer to use in a chisel because look, you can get a nice clean edge to it as well. I need about three or four tubes for this. 
Now the one thing I always, always do, this piece they have in here, always end up cutting that off. Always ends up getting in my way, so I'd like to cut that off. You can see I use the chisel, always put it on the edge, thumb there, just so it makes it safer, don't cut myself. Now the one thing I will do, the reason I've cut myself a few different size nozzles because I don't want to use the same nozzle all the way down. What I want to do is try and vary the nozzle sizes because obviously the brick width of the joint obviously varies as well because the garage is a little bit bowed like that where I did the brick where it didn't do a brilliant job. So the one thing I do know, the biggest joint is easily down to this point here. Now you can see this is why I like using a chisel. It's really, really safe. Just push it in, there we go. That's one, so that's quite a wide joint, isn't it there? I'm then going to do one slightly less. There we go, slightly less again. Now the one thing I will do is I'll just neaten that off a little bit. There we go. That's it, a little bit less. And then obviously a little bit less on that one, as I want to do. So you can see, I've got three different sizes. I'm going to start with the bigger one. Go with that. If I need to then do bigger, I can do, can't I? I'm going to start at the very top and then work my way from the top, get down to about here, about a third of the way down. Then I'll probably have to put a double bead in here because look, you can see how big the joint is. The nozzle, so I'm going to fill it a little bit like this as I'm going down. And then obviously getting down to the bottom, it actually works to the size of the nozzle a lot better. So let me jump on the ladder and we'll start up there. One thing I hate is putting my mastic or sealant or silicon all over my trousers. Don't know, I just don't like doing that. I must confess, I do love this product. It's a great product to use. Now the one thing is try not overfill it, because the more you drag out, the more mess you're gonna make. But now you can see I'm not just quite filled there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back to that and just touch it back up again. So I know when I run with the jointer, it runs in nice and neatly, and then won't it? Now I'm really, really happy with that. All I'm going to do now is run my blue tape up, and then run the actual jointer all the way down there. Then all the way down, so I know it forms a good seal. So I'm get this good soak up. Now. There we go. I've run my paddle up down there a couple of times. I'm just looking at it now. I'll probably actually uh, give it one more spray. So that's it, nice and neat, mastic tin. So now what I've done is I've uh, masticed that joint up. I'm just gonna put the timber post back in and then I can finish my fencing off. So guys, we've finished on Tom's job and it's absolutely brilliant. I'm really, really pleased the way that's turned out. So catch the video with the actual final walk around because it is breathtaking. And then we've just now set up the new job, which I'm at physically on now, and that will be then coming to you in the next few months. Okay, guys, so check it out and see you soon. Take care.